Okay, so this is uh, this is lecture nine. Am I right? Nine. Okay. So nine, and uh, the last thing we saw in the last class was uh, MPAM, right? What is MPAM? So when you do MPAM signaling, so M is typically a power of two. That's it's uh, it's accepted. What is your signaling constellation? Your basis is chosen to be, in this case, when I have a lot of bandwidth compared to my signaling bandwidth, I have a lot of bandwidth to use. I can take my basis comfortably to be root 1 by t between 0 and t. We'll see later on a case where the bandwidth is not so free, so it's a little bit tight. You'll have to change your basis, but it'll still work. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then once you have this basis, I can simply do a constellation description i can i have only a one dimensional signal space in that one dimensional signal space i'll simply pick out the points which are going to be the scaling factors for my basis okay so those are what for the mpam it's going to be so if you have zero here i'm going to pick plus 1 plus 3 so on till what plus m minus 1 okay you can check that you'll have m by 2 points in this way okay on the negative side it's going to be minus 1 minus 3 so on till minus m minus 1 once again m by 2 points on this side overall remember 0 is not a point okay so maybe I should just do this to show that that's not a point it's just an axis okay so the other constellation points are only plus 1 through plus m minus 1 in steps of 2 and minus 1 through minus m minus 1 in steps of 2 okay so all of them you can say occur with equal likelihood okay I should also provide the information of how bits are being mapped into the constellation points right so how many bits would you map here your n would be log m base 2 okay and your bit vector will be b1 b2 to b n okay so in this case it's just log m base 2 and uh, you have two par n possibilities which is equal to m and you have m points here so so right now we won't worry about what's the best way of mapping the bits to the symbols there are some ways of doing it but Let's just say you, you pick a mapping. Any mapping is okay as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so you do that. You get uh, you get a transmitting scheme. Okay, so how do you build a circuit which which does your transmission? You first read your bits. Depending on your bits, you pick one of your say scaling factors. Okay, so that multiplies your phi one of t. Okay, so and you might think of all kinds of resistors and capacitors to build it. So in practice today, most of these systems are built with, in fact. D to A converters. Okay, so what are you putting out ultimately at the end of the day? You're putting out a waveform. So imagine sampling it with a huge sampling frequency. Okay, so and then run a D to A, and all you have to do is do a sample and hold on your D to A, then pick different samples according to your modulation. So it can be easily programmed into a processor with digital output and converted that into a D using a good D to A converter. So these these modulators are done very differently. Okay, you don't have to worry about building complex analog circuits. Of course, if you build those analog circuits, what's the advantage? You will be consuming very little power and all these things in your transmitter, but people don't usually care. The flexibility in your transmitter is what's more important today. So you just put a processor, program your processor to put out a waveform like this. Okay, it's not too difficult to do that. Way. Okay, so it can be done. So that's how usually you do it. So, so I, I can today think happily about my transmitter completely in terms of signal space and points i don't have to worry so much about going into an actual implementation and all that okay all that i'll imagine is being done in a routine fashion okay so that's the that's the description so one thing we know is accurately represented in the constellation is the average energy okay so you can compute average energy assuming once again that all these bits are equally likely okay independent iid type bits this will work out too if you do the computation it involves some careful summation right it's not so trivial if you have to do a careful summation it will work out to m squared minus 1 by 3 okay so it will work out like a square of an ap okay so of an arithmetic progression right so when you do that it's you have to use some tricks to make sure you know what the closed form expression is but it can be done okay you will come out to m squared minus 1 by 3 okay so that's the power so bandwidth like i said i've been saying it's i'm assuming it's enough uh, i'm using enough bandwidth i'm using a lot of bandwidth maybe it's a lot of waste we won't worry about that for now what about the other things the other thing i'm worried about is bit rate right so every in every t seconds how many bits am i sending 
log m base 2 okay so that's a lot of bits okay so how do you increase that number you increase m okay so but you can also imagine for the same power same energy when you increase m what happens right energy is increasing right so if you want to keep energy the same you can't afford to increase m also so so there is a payoff to be played here okay so noise i didn't really talk about noise would be again uh, it would have uh, it's just one dimension so y, y is going to be equal to simply x plus n n would be simply normal with zero mean and variance n not by 2 okay so these are the various parameters you can do uh, the conditional distributions for y given x very easily each conditional distribution will be a gaussian centered at that point with mean mean as the point that was transmitted and variance being n not by 2 okay so you can also do the joint the 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 pdf for y itself which would be a mixture gaussian okay so all these things are descriptions for mpam okay so so hopefully this is clear okay this is the rudimentary thing so if, if at all you go into you're given some bandwidth and power and if you have to construct a communication system the first thing to try would be something like an mpam okay assuming you have enough bandwidth or assuming your t is large enough so that you're not taking too much bandwidth you that's the first shot, first shot implementation without worrying too much about anything else we don't know how to do the receiver right right we don't know how to do the complete receiver right what's the first step at the receiver the correlator right or integrate and dump basically you integrate for a period of t in this case the correlator becomes a simple integrate and dump do you see that it's just a constant basis is a constant so you will be just integrating your received signal from 0 to t and taking that value okay so so you know that step from y how to go to x also is very clear intuitively maybe it's very clear to you just take the nearest point it will be okay we haven't seen seen that rigorously enough we'll see it so okay so even at this point like at the ninth lecture you know how to build a rudimentary communication system right can you or can you not at least theoretically you know how to do it it's not very difficult and all these things like i said transmitters and receivers can be done with processors and completely digital so you should be able to do it you should be confident of being able to take a board which has a processor and a d2a converter being able to do a pam transmitter there's nothing in it okay as long as a transmitter is fast enough you can easily do it okay same thing you should be able to do at a receiver all you need is an integrator and dumping which can be done very easily in software also right so it's just adding how hard is it you can do it so this should, should be confident of being able to do Okay, even in reality all right so this is a very standard communication system so mpam is a very very commonly used system so you can imagine 2 pam is the simplest case bpsk it's commonly used 4 pam 8 pam and all that okay as you go to larger and larger m you're sending more bits at the same time but you're also using more energy okay so if you can do that then it's fine all right so that's the mpam the next thing i'm going to talk about is another type of transmitter which is actually two dimensional which is i think the fifth case we are, we are looking at which we'll go back once again to phase shift keying okay we saw binary phase shift keying matched with two pam but you can also expand it in different way to get what's called quadrature phase shift keying or qpsk Okay, you can also call it 4PSK if you want. That's another name. Okay, phase shift keying. Okay, so so I think the way I've written it down, I'm going to do it uh, slightly more painfully. Okay, so I'm going to go back once again to the very basics and give you the signals first, and then we'll work out the basis basis elements do the gram smith once again just for just for completeness okay n equals 2 so you're mapping two bits at a time okay so you have two bits b1 b2 okay four possibilities occurring with equal probability one fourth each okay that's my assumption on this okay so so my x 0 0 t which is the signal corresponding to the bits 0 0 is going to be root 2 es by t Okay, I'll go back to ES cosine 2 pi f naught t between once again between 0 and t. Okay, so once I say this, I'm naturally so the bandwidth assumption should come in naturally into your head. So this is going to occupy a lot of bandwidth. Okay, so 
So I have to have all that bandwidth to be able to receive this x00 of t at the receiver without any problems in the channel. So I'm assuming that is happening. I have a lot of bandwidth and I'm using a lot of bandwidth in this. Okay. So x01 of t. Okay. So so this f0, what is this f0? This f0 will take to be some m0 by t. Okay. Some not necessary, some large frequency. Okay. So, so we'll, we'll think of this as the center frequency. Okay. So for sending other bit combinations, we'll shift the phase of this uh, sinusoid in the interval 0 to t. Okay. So we'll be shifting the phase, but I'll write it slightly differently. It's all the same. I can, if I shift cos, I can get sine, right? So I'll write it in that form, but just, just to make the graphs bit more interesting. But you can also think of it as simply phase shifting with the cosine. There's no problem there. Root 2 es by t sine 2 pi f naught t between 0 and t. Okay, so you see it's clearly a pi by 2 phase shifted version of the previous one. Okay, so the x11 of t is once again going to be minus root 2 es by t cosine 2 pi f naught t, which is now what? A pi phase shifted version of the first one. Okay, and then you have x10 t, which is minus root 2 es by t sine 2 pi f naught t, which is a 3 pi by 2 phase shifted version of the original. So that's why it's called phase shift keying. Okay, so each bit combination tells you how much you have to phase shift by. Okay, so, so once again the bandwidth is large, I assume my bits are uniform. So if you do uh, Gram-Schmidt, what will you get? Two basis. Yeah, two basis functions. One will be the cosine, other will be the sine normalized, right? So everything else is a multiple of that, okay? But it's two dimensional, it's not one dimensional, okay? So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the final result that you get. Okay, so if you do Gram Schmidt, the basis are okay, phi 1 t, which should be root 2 by t cos 2 pi f naught t. Okay, of course, once again between 0 and t, and phi 2 is root 2 by t sine 2 pi f naught t between 0 and t. Okay, so you get two bases, and in terms of the bases, every signal now becomes a two-dimensional point, right? So the signal space is two dimension. So if I were to write down the constellation, you would have four points. Okay, so this is root T S, this is minus root T S, minus root T S, and root T S again. And the way I wrote it down, if this is this represents phi 1, this represents phi 2, okay. So you're going to have this being 0, 0, this being 0, 1, this being 1, 1, and this being 1, 0, okay. So that's it. This is your constellation. This is uh, QPSK. So, so I can write down the vector version of each of my signal points, okay. So x0, 0, 0 vector is what? Root ES. 0, of course there is a transpose, okay, x0, 1 is 0 root es, okay, x1, 1 is minus root es, 0, x1, 0 is 0 minus root es, okay, so there is nothing holy about the way I have chosen my Assignment 0, 0, 0, 1, when you can choose any way you want. I've just picked it like this. You can pick it in any other way. The constellation doesn't change. Many of the properties don't change. Maybe some minor properties change. It's not very relevant to us. Okay, so it's fine. We'll keep it any way we want. Okay. There's also another version of QPSK called offset QPSK. In that case, the constellation is rotated by pi by 4. Okay, so if you rotate this constellation by pi by 4, what will you get? These points will be on the four corners of a square. Okay, so that's offset QPSK. So if you go back using the same basis, you'll see your signals will all be shifted by pi by 4 fish. That's okay. That's not a big deal. And that's supposed to have some advantages in some practical implementations in terms of signals. That's supposed to be better. But, but phase is just relative. No, I mean, it's, it's what matters really is the difference between two phases. Absolute phase itself 
it's really no significance, but the offset group PSK is supposed to have some advantage. Okay, so 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 you can see why it's called phase shift king and all these things, and you can also see it's different from 4 pam, right? It's very different from 4 pam. Okay, it's first of all two dimensional things change a lot. Okay, so it's very different from 4 pam. Okay, hopefully, you see that. Okay, one more thing you see is each signal has the same energy. Okay, right? All the four signals you're transmitting, all of them have the same energy, ES, and the average energy is also ES. But in 4 pam, it didn't work out like that. Some some signals have higher energy, some signals have lower energy, and average works out to some number. Okay, so that's another point which is different about phase shift keying. That's one more reason why phase shift keying sometimes preferred. Okay, you have all the signals being over 4 pam, for instance. Okay, you might you might have a reason why you might want to send QPSK better than 4 pam because all your signals will have the same energy. You don't have to worry about suddenly some signal having a larger energy. Okay, you can plan for the uh, for every time properly. That okay, so that's uh, PSK. So if you do, for instance, the the model completely, you will get the vector y equals the vector x plus n, where x is uniform. Here, the reason why I'm saying uniform is I'm assuming the, my bits are uniform. Okay, so I'm saying uniform in that. What is n? It's iid normal two-dimensional with mean zero and variance n not by 2. So once you know this, you can do conditional PDFs for y1, y2. Okay, so what will it be? It will be a circularly symmetric Gaussian centered on the transmitted point. Okay, so all that can be done. It's quite standard as well. All right. So there's also a generalization for Q PSK. Okay, so there's no reason why you have to divide the unit circle into just four different. Pick only four points in the unit circle. You can pick any number of points. You can pick eight points. You can pick 16 points without any problem. Right? You can keep on increasing the number of points you pick and uh, you will get more and more uh, signal points in the constellation. You can increase M in that way. Okay, So that is the next step which is called MPSK. Okay? Here M will take to be a power of 2. There is no reason why it should not be a power of 2. Okay? Once again the basis vectors are the same as 4 PSK. Okay? You have just cosine and sine. Okay, is there a question floating around? Happy? Okay. All right. So you have cosine and sine, and uh, I'll, I'll just give you the constellation. Okay. So the same basis vectors, phi one, phi two, as we had before, and the constellation. It's good to draw a circle so that you can pick out the points there. Okay. So I'll take. So I don't know if I've actually taken a proper. So I don't know. I think uh, okay. So I'll just take four. Okay. So we'll keep picking points like this. Maybe you don't get a point on pi by two. I don't know. So it just keeps on going like this. You pick uh, at angles two pi by m. So this angle would be two pi by m. Okay. Same angle here also. Okay. So on. Okay. So, so an arbitrary point. Okay. So basically, you pick m points on the unit circle. On the unit circle, my circle got totally messed up. Okay. What are those m points? Maybe root e s. Okay. E power j 2 pi small m by capital M and m goes from 0 to m minus 1. Okay, so those are my m points and notice how I wrote it down. I wrote it down as a complex number. Okay, so this is again very common way of referring to constellation points on in two dimensions. Right? In two dimensions, you can think of a constellation point as being referred to by two coordinates okay, x and y. Okay, so I can always write it as x plus j y which is which I think of as a complex number. Okay, so this is also very common when people write 2D constellations particularly. You always think of your 2D constellation points as a complex number. Okay, so for the case when m equals 4 you will get back the original case. Okay, so 2 pi by 4 is pi by 2 
so you'll get the four points okay so how do you think of the four points and four psk in terms of complex numbers 0 j no 1 j minus 1 minus j so there are four points plus or minus 1 plus or minus j okay so in the mpsk case you have e power j 2 pi m by m okay so of course the root es is floating around I usually forget the root es in most cases okay is that clear so then you have to map your log m base 2 bits into each of these constellation points and you can do that in any way you want okay so this seems to have an advantage over mpam what's the advantage when you increase m in mpam what happened the energy increased but here the energy doesn't seem to have increased so why would you ever pick mpam over mpsk yeah so okay so yeah so eventually you will pay you will see i mean even though you have not paid in terms of es you will pay in terms of some other quantity which is more fundamental so actually it turns out the es by n naught that ratio is what's important okay so even if you don't pay in terms of es you will pay finally in some way or the other okay so you, another thing another thing you have done here is is you pack the points closer together okay the distances between points also gotten very very low so you are paying in terms of that also okay so we'll later on see how to analyze it at that time that time maybe it will be clear okay what i want you to do now is to spend some time and write down the transmitted signal corresponding to the mth point here in the constellation what is the actual transmitted signal xm of t so to speak corresponding to the mth point in the signal constellation is that clear every point in the signal constellation has to correspond to an actual signal right what is the actual signal that is transmitted when you are sending the mth point that's what i want you to do you know the basis you know the factors so you can multiply and find out what's the answer okay okay so there's a possibility to simplify that you can write it down as one cosine right can you not cosine 2 pi f naught t minus 2 pi m by m do you see that okay so this of course will have a root 2 es by t on the outside to make sure things work out Okay, so this is the signal corresponding to root es e power j 2 pi m by m okay right so this happens for m equals 0 to m minus 1 okay so this defines everything is that okay is that fine there seems to be some you guys happy okay it will work out it will work out like this okay uh, anything else i wanted to say you can be smart about it and write it as real part so that's what that's what i'm going to ask you to do next which is a little bit more confusing i want you to write down the the, 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 once again, I mean, this is between 0 and t, no? Okay, I've been saying bandwidth is large, but assume bandwidth is large but finite. Okay, don't think of infinite bandwidth very strictly. Okay, so it's a passband signal. Do you agree? Around f0. So assume around f0, some 10 by t is available for me, 10 by t or 20 by t. And that's my bandwidth. I'm restricting it to that, but approximately I'm writing the answer as this. Okay, so that's what that's what I'm doing. Assuming that, what is my complex baseband equivalent for this? So the reason why I'm asking you to assume that is last time people said it's not strictly pass band, it's not defined, it's on zero everywhere. So assume some something like that and then give me an answer. Yeah, you'll have a minus. So minus is quite irrelevant. You can even think of it as plus, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll retain that. 
So you'll see xm tilde of t will work out to something like this root 2es by t e power minus j 2 pi m by m. This minus is quite, I mean, it's it's okay. For m equals minus m or 2 pi minus, it will work out to the same thing. So minus is not so important. But the fact is, this complex number representation I had for each of my cons constellation points actually is what? It corresponds to something in the complex envelope. Okay, so it has a real signaling meaning also. So that's why in 2D it's good to think of it as complex numbers. Okay, so when you're processing in baseband, you're processing this complex number. You can think of it that way. Okay, so this is my complex uh, envelope. Okay, of course between 0 and t to make sure everything works out. Okay, is this clear? Of course, for this complex with this number also, you'll have a huge uh, bandwidth around zero. Or maybe convince yourself that that's true. Okay, try to find the. Well, it's, it's quite simple to see what the Fourier transform of this will be, right? It's a constant thing, so you'll get a rect uh, sink multiplied by some phase shift. So it it'll be comp. It's since the in time domain it's complex and frequency domain you won't have symmetry and all that. It'll be a little bit weird. It'll be a shifted type thing. It won't be a proper sink around zero. Okay? It'll be shifted by some arbitrary slight phase, but you can work it out. Okay, it's not a big problem. Try to spend some time on this and convince yourself you understand what I mean by all these bandwidth being huge. Okay, so in future we'll what we will do is in fact you can see what what can happen here. So what what we'll do is in future we'll write down the signals pretty much in baseband. Okay, we don't even have to write down the passband equivalent signal. Okay, so I'll write down the signal in complex baseband. If I write down in complex baseband, what is my basis? Right? My signal space is the regular complex plane. I don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, So I don't have to worry about the Gram-Schmidt. I don't have to worry about all this orthonormalization I did. Okay, So this will be a standard trick that people will use. It's always assumed that your bases are cos 2 pi f naught t and sin 2 pi f naught t for large enough f naught. And then you think of your signal space and everything as complex numbers which represent the complex envelope in complex baseband. Okay, So you can also think of it that way. So in fact this basis will not even enter your picture. You don't. You won't even keep track of the actual signal and cos 2 pi of naught t and sin 2 pi of naught t. You don't. You don't have to worry about that at all. Just worry about baseband, okay? Complex baseband. In which case, all you have to worry about is just the complex plane. All your signal constellations are in the complex plane. Okay. So that's a very common way to think about these things. Okay. But be very very careful when you think like that. Okay. Every point actually corresponds to a actual signal that you are transmitting, and you should know how to go to that. Okay. So you should know that. But since this complex number and the complex envelope are all making a lot of sense, as you get used to these things, you will tend to think of your entire signal constellation as just a complex number. Okay, it's made, so made of complex numbers. But be very careful about the bandwidth that it implies, what it what it means in terms of so many things. Okay, so be 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 very careful about that. But you can think of it as a complex number for ease of use and all that. Okay, so that's the motivation for this complex envelope thing. All right. Okay, so let's uh, do the final example. Is this the final example? Yeah, so final example, which is also very, very uh, common and popular, which is just the seventh one, which is called m squared QAM. Okay, and m is the power of 2. Okay, so it's also possible to have m QAM where m is the power of 2. Okay, so for so what is the difference between m squared QAM where m is a power of 2 and m QAM where m is a power of 2? Yeah, only you have even power. So 8 for instance, I won't have 8 QAM, 32 QAM, 128 QAM. I'm not allowing when I say m squared QAM. I'm only allowing what? 4, 16, 64 and so on. Okay, it's also possible to have 32 QAM. It's used in several practical systems. Okay, I'll talk about that later. Okay, so it's just a minor modification of what is there. Okay, so we'll talk right now about m squared QAM and the best way to think about it is it's the passband version of MPAM. Okay, so, so think of several analogies here if all these things are not hitting your heads there are several analogies to keep in mind okay as long as you are in baseband you are doing baseband real signals which means you roughly have only one dimension to work with. Okay, you don't have this complex number stuff. So by going to pass band, like in the PSK case, 
we somehow get two dimensions and we are able to deal with complex numbers in baseband. Okay? Right? I, I, I kept talking about it when I talked about baseband equivalence. So all those things are happening now. Okay? So you can think of 4, four PSK or QPSK as the passband version of BPSK. Okay? So likewise here this M square QAM will be the passband version or the complex number version of MPAM. Okay? So the, the constellation set will look like this. I will write down the complete one. Okay, it will be two dimensions. Again, the same phi 1 and phi 2. Okay, what is phi 1 and phi 2? Cos 2 pi f naught t, sin 2 pi f naught t for some large f naught between 0 and t. Okay, so it works. Okay, so, so I am going to do a few things here. So, first I am going to mark out points on the axis. These are not constellation points, these are just markers to keep me scale. Okay, so I will mark out multiples of root e s. Okay, 1, 3, okay, no, let me not do. Let me not do root ES. It's just too complicated. I'll just do 1, 3, so on till M minus 1. Okay. Likewise, in the negative direction, I'll do minus 1, minus 3, so on till minus M minus 1. Okay. I'll do the same thing for the Y axis as well. Okay. 1, 3, so on till M minus 1, minus 1, minus 3, so on till minus m minus 1 okay and all the points where i have these both these coordinates happening like intersections of all these points will be my actual constellation points so what are my constellation points here i'll pick all these guys then those guys these guys entire points okay that's the first quadrant okay i'll do the same thing for all four quadrants. Okay, so you see I get m square points, right? I have m points on each axis. M times m would be m square. Okay, so you do it for all the quadrants. Okay, so I am doing it just painfully once to write down the whole thing. Those are my m square constellation points. Alright. Okay, so this is m squared QAM. Okay, remember what are my phi 1 and phi 2? Cos 2 pi f naught t between 0 and t, sin 2 pi f naught t in between 0 and t. And I am justifying that by saying, I have a lot of bandwidth, so this basis will nicely fit and there's no problem. Okay. In future, we'll modify that. Okay. So we'll change to fit into a much tighter bandwidth. At that time, this will make much more sense. But for now, we'll simply take it as a large. So don't think of sine and cos as some. So the Fourier transform for the phi one will not be a delta. Okay. So you can think roughly like that, but actually be a sink shifted at that post points. Okay. So it's a large bandwidth that you're occupying. Okay. Okay, so that's the first point. So how do we describe arbitrary points in this constellation? Okay, so I had an index m for m p s k, where I wrote e power j, 2 pi m by m. Here, the best way people do it is a plus j b. Okay, a and b belong to what? Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, so on till plus or minus m minus 1. Okay, so that's an arbitrary point in my m squared q a m constellation once again i'm thinking of a complex number okay so you can motivate yourself about why this complex number is very meaningful by going to the complex envelope you'll see the signal corresponding to a plus jb will have a convex envelope in this case it'll be a minus jb or something so it's it's every complex number there is a meaning in that so that's okay okay so what else what else this is then this is an arbitrary point and what will be so so my x, which is the transmitted vector, will be actually 2, x1 and x2. Each xi is what? What's the PDF for each xi? I'll say it's uniform in plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, so on. 
okay each xi is actually an amp amp signal right you can think of it that way okay so it's so we have two of them we'll say they are iid so the distribution for x is clearly defined it's 1 by m squared each point taking with equal probability okay what will be expected value of mod x squared yeah it will once again be m squared minus 1 by 3 right it is just two m pams happening so each of them will have an average of m square minus 1 by 3 so it should be also an average is that clear okay so it's this analogy between m pam and m square qam is very very useful so you can in fact think of it as two pam signals but they will be sitting in one real pass band signal as opposed to a m pam signal which usually think you think of as a one real base band signal right so that's the difference between m square qam and mpam okay so and you know why this is possible right how why you can have a complex base band being just one real pass band because you are actually using both sides of the bandwidth when you go to the complex pass band uh, no to go to the pass band version of a base band signal okay so this, so all these things are possible so all these correspondences you should make in your head so in practice typically if you have a pass band bandwidth it always makes sense to do qa okay some quadrature modulation there's no point in doing a real modulation okay so your complex envelope should actually be complex there's no point in keeping that real okay you'll be wasting bandwidth if you actually have pass band bandwidth okay so you'll be wasting half the bandwidth if you force your complex envelope to be real okay so you have to keep it complex so that your pass band signal becomes real and still you work it out okay so that's uh, m square qam any questions anything that's that i'm saying disturbing you with this base band pass band if it is then go back and read also now we can also ask it's a good time to ask something which is not clear okay so maybe we'll do that once again we'll do the pass band signal and then the complex envelope for the qam case assuming a large enough bandwidth around f0 okay so what's my signal corresponding to a plus jb okay so maybe i'll write it as xab of t what is this signal okay it will work out to a times root 2 by t cosine 2 pi f not t plus what b times root 2 by t sin 2 pi f not t between t between 0 and t right this will be the actual signal that i'm transmitting corresponding to a and b chose a plus jb chosen as the constellation point how will i choose the constellation point yeah the bits right the bits will be mapped to constellation points how many bits can i map log m square base 2 okay so that many bits i'll take and map it into a constellation point i should fix that map ahead of time okay in some way i fix it pick my constellation point once my constellation point is chosen corresponding to that i transmit this signal like i said this signal will occupy a large bandwidth around f0 so i'm assuming it is possible like have a lot of bandwidth around f0 so i have that okay so i want you to write down the complex envelope for this okay assuming you're taking a large but finite bandwidth around f0 so that this approximately comes through without much harm what is the complex envelope okay in other words what am i saying you should do you should come up with some signal here so that so that xab of t becomes real part of that complex envelope multiplied by e par j 2 pi f not t okay so that's your xab tilde what will that work out to a minus jb times root 2 by t okay so root 2 by t will always come and then you have a minus j t okay so you can do that okay so if you want a strict correspondence if you want a plus jb to correspond to an a plus jb convex envelope what should you do yeah so you should think of sin as minus you should pick your basis as minus Okay, it doesn't change anything. Okay, as far as power and bandwidth, and nothing changes. Everything is the same, except mathematically it will be neater, it will be cleaner. So you pick one basis to be cos 2 pi of not t, pick the other basis to be minus sin 2 pi of not t. Okay, so once you do that, you will get a very clean, nice complex envelope correspondence. Okay, but it's okay. I mean, we can live with this. A plus J B, A minus J B makes no difference. Okay. 
right? So I'm going to remind you once again about this i-channel, q-channel business. Okay, so how would you actually implement this in practice? So you would have in baseband two signals, right? Right? What would those two signals be? In fact, that would be this, right? X A B tilde equals root two by t a minus j b for what time? 0 and t okay so spend some time and find the exact Fourier transform for this okay I want you to spend some time and do this okay I think this it's a good lesson you might have forgotten anyway we have a lot of about 10 minutes left and I don't want to do anything else in this class so I want you to spend some time and find the exact Fourier transform for this Yeah, it is baseband, right? It's constant between 0 and t, but it's a complex number between 0 and t. What is the expression? So you are saying this is what? X A B tilde F is what? Root 2 by T A minus J B okay. E power minus J F T by 2 T sync F T. Okay. So are you convinced? Is everybody happy with this answer? Okay. So this is how it has to look. Okay. Is it symmetric about F equals 0? Does it satisfy your real and imaginary symmetry? So is the real part and the imaginary part, right? I, I shouldn't say symmetric about f equals 0. What I want is, are the real part and imaginary part, right? So if, if, if x a b tilde of t was real, what would you expect? Real part will satisfy even symmetry, imaginary part will have odd symmetry. So my question is, check that x a b tilde of f does not have those properties. Clearly it cannot have those properties, right? Unless you have b equals 0, okay? So can you check that? What will go wrong? Check very carefully. Yeah, the A minus JB will kill you, right? So once you have that, it will kill you. You'll see everything else will be fine. If you didn't have that A minus JB, it will be fine. Okay? Once you have the A minus JB, you'll see the comp it, it will give you a phase shift, which will shift the things around, and you won't have that real and imaginary part. So that's good enough. So having just, I mean, it has to work, right? That's the property of Fourier transforms. You must have known this for a long time. So it, it works that way. So check all those things just to be comfortable. A minus j? There is a pi. Okay. There is a pi ft. Oh, I missed a 2 pi. Okay, I am sorry. You are right. Okay. So that will cause no problem. That pi ft will cause no problem. If it is there, you will still have a real signal only, right? It is a real signal shifted. It is no problem. It is still real. But this a minus jb will kill you. You will, you will get a real and imaginary part being different. Okay. So hopefully you also know how to compute x, a, b, f. Okay, right from this part you can easily do it from the, but it will also occupy a lot of bandwidth around F0, but it's okay. So this can also be computed. These are important exercises. Don't turn in your answer script saying it's infinite bandwidth, so I won't do it. Okay, so if I ask question, you do. In practice, something will happen, right, when you do this. So these are all interesting questions. People in interviews ask these questions, and most of our students give such answers. They say, this is a, so for instance, I think the question was something like, uh, the capacitor being charged and there was no resistor in the picture. The question was, what will happen if I close the circuit? So something like, some, some such answer, some infinite answer was given. Okay? Something has to happen in practice, right? So as engineers, you have to figure out what will happen. You have to make some approximation and say something will happen. Okay? So always here also assume such things are given to you. Don't make, uh, don't give me answers uh, in terms of the other thing. Okay, so the last thing I want to point out with this QAM is to draw a picture of how the transmitter will look. Okay? So you have two times log m base two bits coming in, right? This is the bits that are coming in. Okay. What are you doing? 
you're first doing what's called a mapper okay so people call it a bit mapper bit to symbol mapper okay you're mapping from bit to symbol so what comes out here sum a plus jb okay right so this is just one signal at your point so so what people typically think of is from here you have to convert this into x a b tilde of t okay so this process is typically not given any name okay so you have to think of it as x a b tilde of t what is this x a b tilde of t you now it will actually have two components the i channel and the q channel what will the i channel have simply a and q channel will have b okay so this i and q will now go into what go into your up conversion circuitry to take it to whatever band of interest that is to okay so typically like i said what what goes into this question mark i, I gave you a brief some two minutes lecture of what how how this typically is done how is it done in today's systems what would sit in here okay like i said it's some processor okay so xab tilde of t is just a sample and hold type thing for some processor here so what will this processor do in this case it's very very easy nothing to do simply keep sending a at lots of a's okay in that particular time interval a lot of b's in that particular time okay so imagine some sample and hold sitting on the other side and it works in in this case it's even ideal right it's all constant so it's ideal so everything will work out okay in future we'll see we might have to put some filters here to make things work out properly because you don't want infinite bandwidth at that time you'll have to do something okay so you'll have to do something at there I'll, I'll talk more about it okay so hopefully all these stages are clear you have bits coming in you map them into a complex number typically which is a symbol okay and those symbols are mapped into the complex envelope signal itself okay which typically is done in base band okay it's it is base band what's typically it is base band and like i said usually people use digital processors and sample and hold type digital to analog converters to do that okay and then you have the up conversion which is truly rf right it's some oscillator phase shifter all these things sitting inside it's some rf goes up x a b of t goes up okay at the receiver what do you do okay of course some noise is getting added here i'm not showing it the receiver what do you do what do you do you do down conversion first okay so what all do you need for down conversion what should you know for down conversion the center frequency the accurate version of the center frequency the reason i'm saying accurate is oscillators are notorious for being inaccurate and they also drift with temperature etc etc so you need a lot of stuff there okay so in most cases what's done is people derive the center frequency from the signal okay it's possible to do that then in that case everything will be accurate if the signal drifts your center frequency will also drift so all those things are done so you do that okay then you get the i and q back okay which is hopefully an accurate representation of your xab tilde of t okay like i said in practice today all this is done digital so you down convert and you sample at a very high rate so that you can think of this as a nice digital signal and then what do you do even in the base the regular pam case what should you do here next what's the operation you have to do the correlation right you have to do the correlation with your fee so in base band what is my fee it's just averaging it's a constant right remember the cos 2 pi of not t sin 2 pi of not t is gone okay that's a crucial difference okay so far i've been talking about the signal in pass band and i've been talking about fee 1 and fee 2 as cos 2 pi of not t the reason is what what's the advantage in talking about the signal in pass band okay i know the accurate bandwidth and the frequency and everything i know okay but i can get rid of that and deal with everything in base band and i'll be fairly accurate i'll know the power i'll also know the bandwidth right i know the bandwidth also the complex base band bandwidth is just shifted when i go to up conversion and down conversion so everything is captured nicely in base band itself from xab tilde of t to the, X, the xab tilde of t at the receiver okay i don't have to worry about this up conversion and down conversion and i can think of my fee 1 and fee 2 completely in base band okay in the qam case right now it's just constant 1 by root 1 by t between 0 and t that's my fee 1 okay so i'm going to just do integrate and dump in this case and i'll get my i and q back okay so this is a hat this is b hat some uh, so i'll have to then estimate then comes my detector right right so i'll have to do detector 
I will get back my actual bits. Okay, so this is how the whole system looks, and what goes here is the correlator. Okay, I want you to be particularly comfortable with this complex baseband and the shift to the real passband picture and back and forth and why it's all the same. Okay, so why complex baseband is good enough. You don't have to deal with anything in passband as far as your detector and correlator is concerned. So even these correlations are done in baseband. You can imagine doing it in baseband. There may be there's some advantage to doing it in passband. I don't know. Maybe in some cases it's good. But typically you imagine doing it in baseband itself. Okay. All right. So that's that's where we'll stop today. You'll have to do your attendance.